Um, uh, okay. Um, I just need uh, one link um, for yesterday's um, code. Uh, let me share my screen. I should, uh, one second. Um, all right. Um, okay. Um, yeah, sorry for this. Um, okay. Um, okay, all right. So, um, today, today's like this morning tutorial is about um, RAG evaluation metrics. This is something that you have already like had some tutorials on already, so you had um like uh, retrieval um improvement well, which had some kind of um, um uh, i mean some, some mentions of the metrics that can be used to evaluate the retriever in particular uh you had also prompt uh, ranking yesterday um you also had like uh, yeah, within generation generator yeah, sorry uh, yesterday's the tutorial by apple we also was uh, generating the evaluation data set also included um, um, uh, like metrics that can you can measure so having that you have some idea about this so can you like um, maybe um, someone can summarize or tell me like what is the understanding of how to like a rag system can be evaluated and like um, i mean what is the goal of that um Let's make this. Uh, I want to get some kind of reactions from you. So just like to make this a bit interactive, because this um, this session is not going to include uh, much code. So um, instead of just talking, I would love to hear from you. So the question is, like, um, just summarize what you know, like uh, the evaluation metrics you know uh, for RAG and like, uh, what is the goal? Why, why do you need this? Okay, Rado. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, to answer the question of why evaluation is important, mm -hmm. I would say for, for any AI-driven solution, um, evaluation is a, a key, a crucial component or step, if I can say. So uh, why? Because you, you want to have a, a good performance and as we are using data, we want to make sure that uh, uh, everything that, that will be, be related to the training uh, will be, when you're facing something new, it can react very well. So that's where the devaluation comes from, from my understanding. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you're right, uh, but I mean, in the for for your case when you're creating an enterprise grade um uh, rag rag uh, pipelines um i mean the evaluation is like um is more important because you want to like your clients or your back end users the ones that are like getting this product from you you want to show them like um with actual numbers, with actual scores, like is this system that I'm providing for you, this kind of prompts I'm providing for you, uh, with, with this kind of um, retriever, 
these are good you say like uh, these are good but how good they are you have to measure that in like quantifiable quantifiable numbers like this is uh like um the scores that this rack system or systems i'm proposing are like this and this and that so um yeah so what you said Rodolf, is is correct um i'm just emphasizing like how how important the evaluation is in this um um for for your for this uh, week's project so like given that you had like several um tutorials on this this is not exactly um how to say a simple task or like um it's not um a simple like just do this and that it's just not a, a few steps or like uh, a couple of steps that you have to do or a, a simple algorithm that you have to write um i'm just saying like it's not um uh, an open and closed um like a question and answer like there is a rag evaluation systems uh, uh is an open problem basically that's what i'm trying to say uh the evaluating um okay rags are a specific a special um uh special type of llms or these are llms that are with like added um with the added context basically the retriever part but um even the llms themselves evaluating the llms is not um and, and just uh, um it's not like general like i mean evaluating normal machine learning um, models for example where you have like if you have a classification model it's easy for you to have a labeled data and then you have like unlabeled data and then you i mean if it's like a binary classification you can just measure the accuracy the recall the uh, uh, the precision and you have these metrics that you can just like um like computing these values is just a straightforward issue. When it comes to LLMs generators, because they're generating text, what is like, um, okay, I'm generating text for an LLM. What does it mean to have accuracy in this case? Suppose I'm asking my LLM for um, like to answer a question. Like, yes, maybe the answer is factual, but this is a text, it's not like a, a, a class. So cla like um, calculating here, the factual accuracy of, of, of this generated output is not um, exactly just like a simple thing of like, this is one or zero, uh, or this is like class one or class two. Um, how to tell that this output is correct or not, you will need to like um, use. Uh, you have to like be smart about uh, doing this. You can either like uh, there is a simple thing of like say like I will, yeah, I will be just me. I will judge like yes, this answer is correct. Basically, using a human annotation, or like uh, maybe. But if you want to do it for a very large uh, amount of data, then you have to like you want to think about automating this and of course people already did this other people are or using llms basically to judge like um, measure like different evaluation metrics on llms and what i'm trying to say is is what i'm trying to um um is what i said clear does it make sense because i was just um talking without any Slide. So this, this is just uh, an introduction, basically. I'm going to go into this. So you know already this, the RAC system consists of a retriever and a downstream generator LLM. Uh, given a user question, the retriever finds a relevant passage from a corpus. Uh, the corpus is like a, a business uh, internal knowledge base, for example. And uh, the LLM then uses this passage to generate a response. So you have two main components, the retriever and the down, downstream generator. And when we talk about evaluating, if, um, evaluate, uh, evaluating the RAG, we, we are like talking about evaluating both these components separately and, maybe, and together, basically. 
So in a rack system, you know already this, that the formulation of a rack system admits a multitude of, of choices, what retriever you choose, uh, how you divide the documents into like chunks, how you split them, uh, how you write your prompt, or how you fine tune the LLM to be used on the retriever information. So the best design of a rack system, like if for your project for this week you are you are you're going to be like uh, uh, you are not generating just one rack system for a particular like um a business internal knowledge base so you, you are not using you are not generating just one rack system you're generating multi you're like a you know, you're uh, creating a system that will create for you like multiple or many choices of rack systems depending on the problem or the or depending on the client's input so and the best design for that is not universal of course across um data domain corpus sizes and the cost latency budget so it's not like um i can tell like what is the best retriever and that's it like there are multiple like choices the choices depend on like the domain the size of the um, the data uh, corpus you're using and also like things like uh, the cost what is the business um like well will, are they willing to um uh okay to bear the cost of uh, human annotation for example or not stuff like that um so that's why like uh, evaluation is not really a, a simple thing so there are traditional evaluations um there are two possible strategies there using hand annotation annotated test data so basically generate questions passages and responses uh like have a data set that is annotated this is a, like this is positive this is negative and then um uh basically evaluate your uh, whatever access you produce on this like comparing what like the the questions that are um generated the passages that are retrieved and the responses you get from the prompts to the like the, that the, the test data uh another strategy is after like uh, creating a rag deploying it and then collecting human preferences uh like like it's like um uh afterwards so you like um click human purpose if, if, uh, after measure that um what people use better which or actually asking them to evaluate what they get and then you use that to to like update the rack system you, you created both these strategies require high domain expertise to create the test data and a considerable annotation not cost. So this like takes time and time, like basically it, it costs effort and, and time. Uh, so it's not exactly um, um, it's not cheap. Uh, the other approach or the other strategies that can be used is model-based evaluation. So these are well, basically, are depending on large, large, large um, language models to create a system automate that automates the evaluation of a RAG pipeline. So uh, there are several um, open source uh, frameworks for for model based evaluation. There is RAGES that you already came across. Um, there is ARIS, and you, of course, you can write your own, like what you did. Uh, what Apple did yesterday, um, uh, for example, the other like exam and ML flow evaluate, they have this also system to evaluate rags. And for each one, they have their own, um, like, uh, each one of these, uh, like, and what you write, like, it depends, like, if they will, they vary in how they define the metrics exactly how they um, 
how they implement or how they use the LLMs, the prompts they use to, for example, to create taste data, to create like um, prompts and um, uh, actually you can see this this part in, in yesterday's uh, um, code. Just before I do that, is there is any question so far? Already? Uh, is it clear or what I'm saying? Is it uh, not clear? Um, any kind of reaction would be good. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks, Manuel. Okay. Uh, so just uh, yesterday's um, tutorial, this was like yesterday's tutorial. Um, the code that used here. So you had two uh, generating data sets, a set da uh, test data. So this was like, this was the code here. I think um, data generation. And uh, so what's important here is that like, um, you're using open AI, so it's an LLM model. And uh, so like this is a prompt was, um, okay, I'll open it in a different, so you have a prompt you written, this is handwritten, okay? You have all wrote this, so um, like uh, your task is to formulate exactly this number of tests and then and like you're trying to generate question and answers, like so the the, the rack here is a question and answer um, uh, system basically. So this is what the, like the end result should be like question and answers. And uh, and you're asking your LLM to generate test test data, basically test questions and answers. And um, so like you're yeah, giving uh, like the prompt giving instructions to create a question and like the format of the output and then like there is this um, requirement for the question to to satisfy and you're giving a context so giving a context uh, your llm is creating for your test data question and answers and then this you're going to use to evaluate the rack system you afterwards um so this is just an example each of these also have their own so for example ragas have something similar to that in a sense uh it is also yes for the data generation also like uh, using um an llm to generate the data sets but they also for areas they are also using a small set of of um of human or ha a hand, a human annotated data sets, uh, which improve their like um, uh, their evaluation of rags. So just to um, to look at some of the matrix that we're measuring. Um, so um, there is a uh, okay. So there's the answer for uh, faithfulness. So this is something you already, um, yeah, something that, yeah, um, basically this information is repeated. Uh, so for example, this metric measures the factual consistency of generated answer given the context. So what's the faithfulness is the faithfulness to the context. Sorry, I should cut sure, sorry. So given a particular context, you're measuring if like your like the your rag in the end is creating an answer like given the context it retrieves is it answering from the retrieved context or not so for example this is just an example if this context is this about albert einstein i was born on 14th of march for the german born theoretical physicist widely held to be one of the greatest and most influential scientists of all time and the question was where is where and when was an, uh, Einstein born? 
A high faithfulness answer would be an final one in Germany on the 14th of March. So this answer from here. And um, this is an answer that is, is not from the context. That's what's um, um, so in a, in in um, the formula is basically like the forcefulness score, the number of claims that can be inferred from a given context, and the total number of claims in the generated answer. Um, so yeah, so if I mean um, like. <clears throat> So it's uh, just like if, if, if the, your system in the end gets its answer from the retrieved context it has. So this is the answer for faithfulness, one of the metrics. Um, um, how you define the number of claims uh, in the generated answer and how to define the number of that can be inferred from the given context, this is like, um the there are choices to be made here but um uh this is the general definition of this metric another metric is the answer relevance basically like what answer is, uh, is like um if the answer to the question given the question is the answer like um uh well, his answer, I guess, makes sense. Is, is it relevant to the question or is this something like uh, not relevant? So, yeah, so the question is asked. There is a context that is retrieved and there is an answer. So the answer could be from the context that was retrieved, so high faithfulness, but is not, is not relevant to the question. So, for example, here is Einstein. Einstein born where, where, where and when Einstein was born. So if the answer was like um, Einstein is a theoretical physicist instead, so this answer is from the context, is is high faithfulness, but it is not the answer to the question. It's not relevant to the question. So that would be a low, a low relevance. Um, so um, okay, I should just move on quickly on this because like it's uh, simple enough. There is a context recall. Uh, this like are so these measurements so this first two the answer for first one is and the relevance answer for relevance are measurement of the um, um, of the performance of the generator so the second component of the of the rag uh, here the context recall is actually is a metric that evaluates the retriever part of the of the of the rag so um it measures like um uh, whether the con retrieved context uh is is um um how much of it is uh like aligns with uh, with the uh, with the question basically um so uh, given a sentence or a given a context that was recalled how much of it is uh, attributed um, uh, to to the to the like so to the context I, I need and how oh and the, the retrieved uh, as a percentage of the retrieved context um, okay um, No, no, not the retrieve context in general, but uh, like uh, the the context I needed to retrieve. So, of course, this is a recall. The relevance is the one. So, the relevance is the relevancy of the retrieve context. Um, so, given the question, I'm asking if if whether the retrieve context uh, like um, is relevant to it. So, um, so this is like a measure, for example, this is uh, again Rages uh, formula. The number of uh, the context relevancy is the number of sentences in that are um, relevant to the answer in the given question um, divided by the total number of sentences in that irretrieved context. Okay, so this is a definition they are using. Um, 
um, it, it could, like, um, there are possible other possible definitions of this. Um, but yeah, so this is the meaning. This is like, um, so what it matters is that uh, what you are gauging for will depend on the, on the, like what the end user wants or what is the business user wants. So if you really want, you really want correct, correct answers that are really from the, the context. Um, for example, uh, you, you, you want really the, the, all the information you have about, about the question, you want a high context relevancy. Um, uh, like you, when you need like the answer to be really from the context, nothing, um, uh, nothing from anywhere else. You want uh, like a high faithfulness, answer faithfulness, uh, so stuff like that. So what you optimize for depending depends on the like what you want to to do. What kind of algorithm you use depends also on the budget and uh, like what you are willing to use. Um, so I'm not really comparing here between uh, ragas and areas, but um, I just want to to mention some different uh, some of the differences between them, just to point out like different strategies that are used. Uh, but before I do that, is there is any questions? Is everything I'm saying is very clear? Um, Basic, basically, all, all of you understand all of this. As like an emoji will suffice. Yeah, in, in this sense, yes. Uh, well, we are assuming, sorry. Fanuel is asking, is the business need predefined? Um, so basically, you are, I mean, this is in general. Assume that, yeah, it is predefined uh, or you're asking your user to input what they want exactly. I might give your end user, the business users, uh, a few exa a few options, not like something general. Um, like, do you want this or that? Which one, which, uh, which uh, metric you really want to, to uh, optimize for? And then you like you can have like these two options in your like UI in uh, in the end. Is this um, does this make sense, panel? Or also there is needs to be an option given to the user uh, other than the input. Uh, well, yes, this is something you can add basically. Yes, that's what, what I'm saying to create uh, really um, a good product uh you should be able to like um, have options for optimizing um uh, your racks or at least you have to i mean it's not i'm not saying it's a requirement but it's uh at least uh, in the end you have to, to do some evaluations but if you want to add more you can optimize like you can have this option for the users but um okay good uh so i'm going to just uh, as i said mention a few things about um arrays basically so as i said before ragas depend on a fixed set of heuristically handwritten prompts that means its adaptability to various evaluation contexts might um like not be like it's not completely adaptable to all domains um uh so I compared uh, this uh, with uh, like uh, Apple's tutorial yesterday, as I mentioned before, like you have this handwritten prompts for your LLM to generate the uh, test data. And you also have an, um, like how you compare, how to make, how it was, well, let me see. Let me just go back to the code to see what was evaluated. Um, so, uh, what was the evaluation is like what metrics were measured yesterday does anyone remember can tell me quickly i you can just see it um 
So, right, did you see that? Um, so there are, um, so given, um, Even though I looked at this um, yesterday, but I can't remember now what it was. Um, uh, okay, so generic evaluation prompt here. Uh, so yeah, so I think uh, what was measured is a uh, context. Uh, uh, Sorry, is a is a quest is the answer relevancy? So if it, it is from the context or not, basically I might not I might be wrong, but um, I, that's what I see from just the prompt here that is given to the LLM to do this judgment. So the LLM is the one doing the judgment here uh, for like for your like for your rag, basically. So the output you have the test data, the rag is. Um, evaluated on uh, like uh, uh, is allowed to act on this test data and then this uh, the its performance is evaluated using an llm uh and this prompt is for i think for measuring the answer relevancy okay um so so this was the one approach another one is like for aris for example they use a fine-tuned llm judges so they are llm judges to measure um, each component of the rag pipeline. Uh, but the, uh, what's different is that their LLM judges are not just like what Apple was using for OpenAI, just directly, they are fine-tuned, means they are pre-trained uh, to do classifications. And they are fine-tuned using the um, like um, human annotated data set like 150 examples, it's not so many, but, um, and their results are generalizable to with exceptions to across domains. So um, it's not, a, it's not the, the, the performance is um, pretty good. Uh, so I'm just going to go through like, um, again, I already talked about this, but just to Reiterate, for example, for Aries, they're generating the synthetic data sets, um, generating queries and answers from the corpus. So giving a corpus of, of data, they are generating queries and answers using generative LLMs. Um, so you will have a query passage answer triplets, basically. Um, and for generation, you use a few short examples for uh, with in-domain passages mapped uh, to the in-domain queries and answers. So it's just like, just like the the prompt we saw here. So this prompt, it's a few short prompt. So given a document query, document query, document query, and then you give a document of wait for the LLM to generate the query, which compared here to the data generation prompt with Apple, which was different, right? It was given as in instructions. There are examples, there are a few shots, but there are also instructions in the prompt. So you see, like there are, these are differences, like these are choices, um, basically, and they will affect the, the, the performance of the evaluation system <laughs> in the end. Um, or like maybe the effect is, is not huge, but anyway. So this is the first part. The second part is um, the LLM judges, as I said. For each uh, of the key metrics, um, they and they are measuring three metrics in for Aries. They have a separate LLM with a classifier head, fine tuned to classify positive and negative examples. It said uh, the fine tuned they use a human preference validation set. 
so why is why I'm I'm highlighting this? Why I'm mentioning this uh, in particular? Why what does it? Um, I'm, I'm I'm mentioning this in particular. This thing with the human preference validation set, which is, um, I mean, when you're generating a, a test that uh, a, a test data set with LLM, I mean. Um, LLM gen generation itself is not guaranteed 100% to be um, correct, right? So generating question and answers, uh, what is the guarantee that the question and answer, like the answer is going to be um, like 100% correct, a correct answer to the question. Um, uh, a human preference uh, validation set, it can be treated this as like a, a gold um, standard, uh, well, uh, a gold standard basically, while the the generated the set generated by LLM is like a, a prediction for on from the machine learning uh, machine learning model. Uh, but there is a way to um, like. Sorry, keep um, going further. The point is by using this small, even though it's a small validation set, they can actually um, guarantee the statistical um, relevance or the statistical uh, um, um, they can make, they can actually have a confidence interval for the for the scores they get for a RAC system. So when um, they are using something called prediction powered inference, which um, is a statistical method that tightens the confidence interval on predictions on a small set of annotated data points. So basically, what I'm saying, so maybe I was saying it is a bit confusing. What, I, what I'm saying is that the data set, the test data set, instead of, um, I mean, in a, in ideally, ideally, a test uh, data set should be created like by, I mean, by hand. You have like this uh, test data set that you are sure that each question answer or each query document answer triplet is like these are correct they are like correctly related when you use an llm this to to do this for you it's not a guaranteed of course but then of course it's it's, it's expensive to create it by hand or use a human annotation basically so this is expensive and this is not guaranteed. Uh, here they're using like a mix. So you're using a small set of annotated uh, test data set. And the rest of the data set is created by LLM, but they are using this prediction power inference to basically um, uh, expand like the, the, um, stat, uh, like the confidence interval measured on the small human annotated uh, test data that you can measure like um, the scores you get on the human annotated data set are like um, I mean these are the um, okay so what you're measuring there is like you can call this like um, an estimated score right uh, on the small data set but then using the larger data set from LLM you can uh, like ta um, expand, like um, improve your statistics, basically. It tightens the confidence interval. You know, because if you remember, this is from statistics. When you are using a small data set, your confidence interval is going to be uh, too big. Uh, I mean, um, just because it goes like a inverse relationship with with uh, with the number of samples. Um, if you manage to increase, um, and this method allows you to increase your data set, basically with the LLM generated one, you are going to reduce the confidence interval. So um, this is basically what is the good thing that ARIS does. 
And as I said before, um, uh, sorry, what I want to say, as I said before, they, this comes with like, uh, with a, sorry, we're looking for, maybe the reality here, sorry. Um, so this comes with uh, like, uh, with a small expense of that you need some human um, annotated data set. Uh, they, ex uh, they estimate it to be 150, um, sam sample of 150, so it's not really huge. And as I said, like, um, um, okay, this is generalizable. They find it to be generalizable to with some exceptions. So they're generalizable across domains, but not, for example, if you change the language, uh, it wouldn't uh, work. Um, so there are some some exceptions with that. If you want to like read this in details, you can find it in the paper, uh, the Iris paper um, here. One like uh, what they have the exceptions to um, yeah. So like it's, they find it to be like have generalizable across domain basically uh they focus strong generalizability um using only 300 data points for human preference validation but then the exceptions are with when switching languages switching from text to code i mean that was what works for a rag that works works like is for generating text won't work for a rag that is supposed to work with with code and switching from retrieving text to extracting of entities, web pages, and citations. So, um, um, yeah. So basically, that's that's it for 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 Aris. Any question? I I feel like uh, maybe what I was saying was not super clear. So, any questions? Nothing. Um. Okay, so if everything is clear or if you don't have any questions, um, uh, can also like give some kind of reaction so we can, uh, And this tutorial, basically. Okay, let me ask you a question. A question. I, I'm maybe I should wait for you to react, but okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you understand, like, how are you going to apply what I was talking about or the evaluation, basically, um, step? In, in in your the system you're building okay Abdrahman. Uh, hello. Uh, hello i'm not sure exa exactly how i can apply this in my uh, in my code yeah so you you so you, you don't know so does anyone else knows or does uh, like some of you manage to like um or understand how where to implement uh, or where does this step falls within the within the workflow for your system i mean i'm going to Okay. Um, should I answer? Should I ask randomly? Um, Okay, so um, I, I really 
want uh, you guys to volunteer um, um but um okay so where do you have to implement this or um or what is the need of that um so you are creating rag you're creating rag systems right um depending or like a, your rag is this uh, uh is made of these components or you have you are choosing you are making multiple choices when you're creating your rug you're choosing um a retriever you're using of course you're choosing like a vector a vector um, store you're choosing an embedding you're choosing an, a splitting uh, for, for your chunk uh, you're splitting your data into chunks this, these are all you have, there are choices and there are parameters that you can choose in each of these uh, steps. Uh, you are also using, uh, choosing your, um, uh, your LLM. Generative, all of you are going to be using OpenAI, so it doesn't, that choice doesn't matter really much. But um, what your, one important thing that you're doing, you are creating prompts, right? And the prompts, you, are need, you need to optimize your prompts. And this is something like you had a tutorial yesterday about it, about ranking it, about ranking prompts. Um, I'm measuring their um, um, their performance basically. So in each of these steps, you are making choices, and so you are you are in the end you are creating rack system with like there are many things that you can change about this rack system. So you have like many choices of a rack system that you can create so to choose between them you have to like um distinguish between them and uh, i mean have to measure their performance to be able to compare and these metrics basically you have to like use some quantify like a quantity some value quantifiable value to that such so that you can compare and these evaluation metrics defined here, or like there are others, if you like, you can find, um, sorry, where is it? So yeah, so like this stuff and, uh, and more, you have to implement uh, uh, like such that um, you have to create a, a test data set and then measure the metrics on your uh, for 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 your, the rug you are creating or if you're creating multiple rugs or multiple let's say you are choosing just the prompts you're varying only the prompts you uh, like for varied prompts you're going to measure um some of these metrics and then see which one give you the best performance does this make sense abdurrahman are you following so far yeah yeah it's make it makes sense uh thank you okay okay good uh so yes yeah, so you have multiple options to to do this you can like um following what apple did yesterday you can create your own basically system of evaluating um different uh or you can also use one of these like um made already made um, uh, uh, frameworks for evaluation uh, you can both you can choose a mixture of this and that i think ragas or at least ragas uh, allows you to like basically define your own metric um, so there are these options uh, available the thing that you, what you need to understand is what is the matrix you are measuring and what are the choices you are making can affect um what you measure so, so for you like because this is very competitive i mean like uh, i mean this is a project of course for ten academy but uh, uh given that this is like an actually um a competitive reason um, to a large extent recent um, development in in the in the in the market basically uh, what what um is going to uh differentiate between um like uh, between uh, suppose yeah, you, you created your own company to do this 
what differentiate between you and other competitive companies is that what you're going to use for for um, measuring the comp performance and what because what you measure comp um, i mean how you measure the performance and decide what is the rag you're going to uh, supply to your clients uh will will um the, the, how you measure the performance and how you make these decisions will uh, affect how you like you generally perform in the market right um i'm just saying blah 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 uh okay so any more questions does this like makes perfect sense is like um any reaction so we can end this session okay okay good good so yeah uh i suppose everything is clear so uh any if you have any more questions of course you can ask on slack uh, um so have have a nice afternoon um and thanks for being here bye can end the recording